I wanted to answer some questions that pertain to the thumb. Does the thumb move? Does it not move? Where does it move from? How does it relate to the rotational movement? So, first of all, when we play the thumb, when we play the other fingers, they move from the main knuckles. We then coordinate them with the rotational movement, but that's where they move from. When we move the thumb, the thumb moves from the side. It's moved by another muscle. And to the question, very often people say, where does it move from? It moves from the second knuckle. Now, clearly we don't isolate it, and the way we don't isolate it is to move with the forearm, going from the side and putting it down so that it gets the support of the forearm. In the process of working out rotation and other movements in the Talmud technique, because people come usually with a frozen forearm, the forearm is very, very tight and doesn't move, we move from the fingers alone, we move from the upper arm, but the forearm is very tight and that's the movement that actually allows us to connect, to move in a coordinate way, to move quickly from finger to finger and give us also the means for sound. So the language when people come first with a very tight forearm would be move from your forearm. Let the forearm play your finger. Just to get the freedom of the, of the forearm moving left and right. But an experienced teacher would look at the same times and see what's happening with the thumb itself. Because very often it becomes completely inactive. Sometimes it still stays tight. So then we go to the movement of the thumb itself, which is right from this knuckle, the second knuckle. And the way I like to describe it is as you turn to the left, let the thumb move a little bit in the direction of the second finger, and coming back, feel that the forearm puts it down. Now, why for the forearm to put it down? Clearly the thumb itself also moves, because the thumb still has the tendency to get there a little bit ahead of the arm, to isolate just a little bit. So these are all steps along the way, and once you have it, there is a feeling that as the finger turns, as it moves, the forearm moves with it, they move together. But we often have to do it in parts before the whole works as a unit. So it works that way. We have to make sure that the wrist is not low, that it's at the height, that feels that you're right, the forearm is right over the finger. So this is uh, one issue. The issue as is to whether, what's the shape of the finger? It shouldn't be straight or pulled out, which often it is. It shouldn't be curled because that's already tight. It pulls on muscles that tighten the, the finger, the hand, and the forearm. It should be in its natural position, which is the natural curve of the finger, and go this way. And when the finger gets a support of the forearm, it doesn't feel that it has to tense also to do something. Uh, another question uh, that comes up is when we play other fingers, what does the thumb do? For example, if I'm moving from here to here, as the forearm turns, the thumb always has to be together with the hand. So if I'm going to the fourth finger, the thumb doesn't need to move. It's going to take away from the ability, actually, of the other fingers to move. So. But it is together, it's not here, it's not here, it's not over there. It's turning with the hand and all the fingers move together. Sorry. When the time comes for the thumb to play, then it's time for it to move a little bit. And again, as a teacher, I will always see, because very often when I get the form very, very freely moving, the thumb naturally already is moving a little bit. Always to the degree that fits together. So again, when other fingers move with the forearm, the thumb is always next to the second figure, not stretching away from it, not falling down, not going up. Now, an interesting example of what happens when I go from three to two. The thumb is still with me, but you see the second finger has a little bit more motion. So that's what togetherness is when I go from three to two. But if I go from three to one, what's togetherness? Then the thumb does move a little bit, and 
And the second finger is not dead, it's not moving a lot, but this is togetherness. I'm exaggerating the movements. This is when they're together, and the thumb just is a little bit more active as it's going to play different here. Here it's just with the rest of the hand. Here it's going to play. So that's another aspect of it. Last thing to note is when I talk about finger movement and making sure that the fingers are not dead, when you coordinate the finger movement with the rotational element, it makes it very easy for the fingers to move. And very often, that amount, which is nowhere as great as when we isolate it, is just enough to move and to move with ease. And because it is supported and makes easy, it's made very easy to move by the motion of the form, there isn't a sense of fingeriness, of fingers moving hard, fingers uh, working very hard. It's a very, you can, see that my, you can see that my fingers are moving, so you have to be careful that when, when I talk about the thumb motion, that very often when I notice, when I uh, connect a person to, to the hand and to the form and they're moving, there is already a motion there. If I added more, it's going to feel already like too much. And in a sense, again, break away the beautiful balance of, of the, the beautiful ecosystem of the connection of the finger to the hand and to the forearm where everything happens with great amount of ease.